Hello everyone, welcome back to Cody's lab. As you can see, I'm back up at the mine. The snow's melted off, everything's dried out, so I was able to drive up here without uh, tearing up the ground. Unfortunately, as you can probably tell from all the wind, we got another storm coming. It's supposed to snow about uh, four inches tomorrow, so I got a very short window of opportunity to work, so I probably won't get anything of significance done today. But I wanted to uh, put out a little video. It's been almost six months since the last video on this, so, yeah, I figure I ought to come up here and do something because, you know, I, the series is not over. Haven't uh, planned on ending it. Although, YouTube has been really uh, pushing back on me, threatening to delete my channel for inciting violence. I don't know where they're getting that. But, uh, yeah, there's that, you know, plus the weather. But we're back up here. We can have a look at things, see what happened over the winter. I was looking around, uh, it doesn't look like any of my alfalfa grew, at least survived. I did come up here a little while ago and I took that generator down. It was getting buried. Yeah, a little bit of dirt's fallen. It was actually a pretty wet year, but even still, this isn't so bad. Yeah. This is a clay here, but it never really gets wet. This stuff was laid down to Lake Bonneville, and I don't think it's been fully wet since Lake Bonneville receded. Anyway, uh, I guess we can dig up this and get in there today. I wanted to get in and uh, grab some samples, because I got a, a fancy new X-ray spectrometer that I can play with, and I can actually do my own assays instantly. I didn't actually bring it up here because I didn't want to accidentally drop it. It is a very expensive piece of equipment. And I can grab some samples and take back to it. And uh, we'll check on that probably later in the video. Okay, so I got that open. It was actually pretty easy. See, I got my hat on. Let's uh, turn on my light and head on in. Looks like we got a little bit of uh, mud that fell here. That's not very much. Yeah. That's uh, why the bracing is in this part of the tunnel. This stuff's a lot weaker than rock is. Alright, here we go. There's that salt that falls from the ceiling. Another thing that uh, people keep asking me about is uh, if I'm afraid of a cave-in. Well, look at the way the rock lays. See that? The laminations are almost vertical here. Catastrophic cave-ins really can't happen with this type of geometry. Rocks still do fall, but I'm not too worried. Over here might be a little bit worse. But, uh, let's go in. You see there's a layer of dust on everything. Maybe some mouse tracks. Besides the mice. Oh, there's a mouse right there. <laughs> there's nobody's been in here. Oh, it is much open. See all that's missing? Big pile of rock right here we knocked down. Alrighty, that's very red, isn't it? I'm gonna get a sample of that right there. Yeah, the whole idea with this mine, you know, I was on my property, figured I'd come in here and see what we got, see if there's any minerals, and if there's not anything valuable, the idea was to make a little fallout shelter in here. Look at those damselflies. What are they doing in here? Uh, one of the reasons I haven't been doing that, like I haven't been growing any plants in here like I wanted, is uh, my assay that I ran on this sample in here. You know, I sent it in to a professional company. Did a $300 assay on the rock right here. And they told me it had a high lead content. And if there's lead in this dust, you don't really want to be breathing it too much. Another reason why I have been limiting my exposure. 
But now, I'm going to be able to test it myself. I don't think that that assay was accurate. I, I have melted this down in a furnace. I didn't get nearly as much lead as they said there was. So, here we are. It's so much more quiet in here. I really do like it. Can't even hear the wind. <laughs> Alright, so let's uh, grab a couple of samples. I probably want some of this here. Let's grab that. Okay. I want uh, this right there. I might have to go get my hammer. Oh, there we go. Just a piece of that. And this right here. Probably a piece on the ground I can just pick up. There we go. That's just to grab a bunch of samples, take them back, and test them with the x ray. I guess that's all I wanted to do. I'll head on out of here. It's a dead mouse, isn't it? I need to evict them. Put a good door on here that seals. Keep them out. Especially when I'm going to be storing food in here. So anyway, uh, the whole explosives thing. Like, I've been using a low-velocity explosives. You know, could probably do a lot better with some actual dynamite, but... Yeah, you know, I've been trying to do this legally, uh, people are still complaining. Ooh, dead tarantula. So I think I would like to get, you know, the pr proper permitting, you know, license to handle explosives, etc. I think uh, King Rand and, and me both wanted to do some stuff. It's going to be expensive, but probably worth doing. I don't get any sort of lawsuits on my hands. You know, even if I'm just digging a hole in the backyard, you know. Okay, so here we are at my desk. You can see I got a box of rocks and an X-ray spectrometer to test them out. I got a little uh, styrofoam thing here that I can set this on. So I can do this hands-free. It is meant to be portable and, you know, be able to shoot from a handheld position. But uh, I find it's a lot easier just to set it up so I can put it in front of the rock and then not have to touch it. I'm going to start a uh, 40 kilovolts for 60 seconds and then the uh, 25 kilovolts for another uh, 30 seconds so we can see what's in this rock. You see what this does is it puts out the x-rays at a certain uh, energy. The electrons of the atoms in the rock absorb the x-rays, get kicked up to a higher energy level, and then as they drop down they produce more x-rays, but at a lower energy. And each element produces a different signature, a different energy of x-rays that is put off. Because, yeah, if the electrons fall at different distance. And uh, if I take my Geiger counter here and put it in front, let's see, it's getting a little bit of radiation coming through the rock. Almost all of it is stopped within a very short distance, though. <clears throat> and you notice the thing puts out uh, x-rays in a beam, so there's no radiation over here where I'm standing. Looks like there's a little bit right over here. It's probably reflecting off the rock and missing the sensor, which is good to know. If I were to put this uh, Geiger counter in here uh, without the rock, it'd probably burn something up. That'd be way too much for it. This uh, puts out a lot of energy. It's all ionizing radiation, too. <clears throat> Before you guys get your panties in a twist, I am actually certified to use one of these. <laughs> Crazy as that is, eh? I used one uh, for college. Okay. Looks like it just finished. Let's uh, lift this up so you guys can see. Let's uh, zoom in. Focus the camera. Okay, so we got some sulfur. Let's turn that your counter off. That's annoying. 
Okay, so we got some sulfur and chlorine, potassium. Makes sense, this is a hydrothermal uh, altered rock, so it's had salt water go through it. Calcium, of course uh, most of the rocks in the area are primarily limestone. <clears throat> so a little bit of iron, so the, the red staining in the rock is iron. Tiny bit of arsenic, nothing to worry about. And this right here is interesting. So we got about uh, 10 parts per million of lead and mercury. Now the assay report that I got back for this rock told me that I had 42,000 parts per million, which is 4.2%. You know, <clears throat> now I might be able to see this being off by an order of magnitude, you know, if the x-ray was on a different spot or, you know, this thing wasn't accurate, but yeah, off by a factor of 10,000. Something's up. <laughs> hey, birds just have to make so much noise, don't you? They were asleep before I started. <clears throat> so yeah, either I was lied to, which I doubt. I mean, what, what, what motive would they have? Or the, the samples maybe got mixed up, or maybe it's a typo. They sent me the wrong numbers. That's a big discrepancy. Also, I'm not, I'm not seeing any gold here. But uh, it doesn't mean it's not there, it just means that it didn't get a good peak. So, see, maximum of four parts per million here. Yeah, I was able to get a tiny amount of gold out of a bucket of this crushed ore. But, honestly, if I took a bucket of dirt from just about anywhere and processed it the same way, I would have gotten a bead of gold. Alright, so I'm going to go through and uh, test the rest of these rocks, and uh, I'll show you the results for each one. Uh, starting with uh, this one right here, which uh, I think is going to be similar to that, but uh, lower in iron, perhaps. Okay, so the results are in for that rock. The sulfur content looks like it's a little higher. Same with the chlorine and the potassium. Calcium's about the same. Iron, I think that is less. It would make sense. A little bit of gold, there it is. Okay. So that's uh, where I was able to get it. I got a good peak for it there. This is interesting, like six parts per million lead. That is so low. So I just did that rock there. Okay, so it's a lot higher in potassium, which would make sense because I think this is uh, clays that are basically cementing together some uh, limestone pieces. Clays are generally high in potassium depending on the type of clay, so in high in calcium. Titanium's up there. It's interesting. Iron's a lot higher. Yeah. About 1600 parts per million. Yeah, but again, the lead is almost non existent. Tiny amount of gold as well. Nothing to get too excited about. Okay, so here's a rock from the mine that is uh, just above the mine that I've been working in. I suspect uh, they were trying to dig underneath of this uh, with the, the lower mine. Anyway, here's the report from the x-ray. Sulfur, potassium, much lower on the calcium, you'll see. Some manganese, <laughs> yeah. Well, the vanadium is pretty high. But the iron is showing 200% uh, iron. Well, that just means that it's uh, exceeded the maximum detection. It's basically overwhelmed the sensor with iron. Uh, I can change the mode and adjust for that, but that just tells me there's a lot of iron there. 
Uh, copper, uh, it's almost a percent zinc. Tenth of a percent arsenic. See, I thought there was arsenic in it. Uh, so, okay, about a tenth of a percent lead. That, that's pretty high on lead, but, you know, still nothing compared to what they told me it had. Tiny bit of mercury, no gold. Which is weird, because you, you'd expect to see gold in something like that. <clears throat> so my guess is what happened is when they were mining, they found this up uh, kind of on the top of the mountain, which is, you know, it looks like a really good thing to be mining in. Did an assay, found very little, if any, gold. And they wanted to get down lower on it to see if they could get it stronger. And I guess they never hit it. I think that's what happened. All right. So there's the uh, some tests. Sorry about these birds. I probably should have done this somewhere else. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Okay, so I just had to show you guys this. So I've got some uh, canned tuna fish that I dried out in the oven, and I just X-rayed it. And I'll show you guys what this uh, X-ray shows. Come on. So uh, a lot of chloride and potassium, as you'd expect. Some iron, zinc, some almond arsenic, silver. That's kind of odd. <laughs> Cadmium, that uh, bioaccumulates lead, and gold. There's actually gold in tuna fish. Not a lot. Selenium and phosphorus again is dropped out, but that's almost certainly there. Well, what I thought was interesting is the mercury is down in the non detected, so less than one part per million. But when I tested this uh, raw tuna here, you can see the numbers. The mercury was at uh, 3.5. Uh, of course, this is still in the non-detected. You do have to take these numbers with a pretty big grain of salt. Uh, it's not really designed for testing things this low in density. But you can kind of get an idea. So, 3.5 on the mercury, gold's also about the same. And uh, when I dried it out, the gold went up into the detected range because it you know, concentrated it to the point where we got a nice peak. But the mercury, it didn't do that. You know, when we got rid of all that water, the mercury left as well. Which means mercury in the tuna is in a form that is volatile. I actually looked it up, and the uh, boiling point of the methyl mercury, which we'd expect to see in the fish, is actually below the boiling point of water. So that's what went wrong the first time I tried to extract the mercury from the tuna. I was losing it when I was drying it out. It does uh, give me some ideas on ways to uh, maybe even remove the mercury from tuna fish. Anyway, I'll have to keep that in mind.